Ravi, let me first of all thank you for uh, taking time for this session and uh, really appreciate uh, you know your uh, sharing your views given the current uh, context and situation. So, you know, love to start with your background, Ravi. So, uh, if you can start with that, then I will go into some questions uh, which you know we will uh, uh, take during the session. Uh, yeah, I'm Ravi Dhariwal. I sort of started my career with Hindustan Lever, now Hindustan Unilever. Uh, I studied to be an engineer, but uh, you know, didn't pursue engineering at all, went to management from IIT Kanpur to IIM Calcutta. And then my first job was with uh, Hindustan Lever. And I worked in the sales and marketing department for 12 years there. And my last job with uh, Unilever was head of marketing for uh, uh, soaps. And then I got uh, head entered and I joined uh, PepsiCo as their first employee in India. And I launched Pepsi in India and was here for five years as head of the Pepsi beverage business. And then I was posted outside India for seven years, again with PepsiCo, different geographies, Europe, uh, you know, uh, South uh, Southeast uh, Asia, uh, and you know, I, Africa, and then I uh, left Pepsi and joined Bennett Coleman as its uh, CEO. And you know, I retired from there about five years ago, and I was the group CEO for uh, the Times Group, um, which consists of uh, newspapers and television and radio and. This. And now I am a board member in a few companies, and I am associated with IBCAP as its uh, advisor. So that's a bit of background. I worked in consumer product companies all my life, and my sort of functional skill set is about um, is about uh, uh, sales, marketing, and general management. That's what uh, that's well, me. Thanks, thanks, uh, thanks a lot, Ravi. I think. Uh very rare to find your kind of background uh, and the experience uh, and you know I would love to hear uh, your uh, views on how do you see the current situation uh, given what's happened in the last few weeks with the shutdown in India and uh, now of course uh, what's happening in Europe and US. How do you see the overall situation and overall scenario? Well, I see a period of time between now and when uh, a vaccine will be uh, will be you know found and when a treatment will be found. So I, I I think that that period is the critical period. My belief is that most people will get this virus. It's very difficult for human beings to be isolated or quarantined for all for for you know. Uh, a year it may take a year for the vaccine or uh, the treatment to be found so you know almost everybody will get it at some stage or the other uh, and you know the whole whole reason for quarantining i think is to prepare the to prepare the medical system and to match demand versus supply you know um, for hospitalization that apart i think because almost everybody would get it people would live in fear of getting it for a much longer period of time. And that fear will translate into two or three things. One, a change of attitude or a questioning of your attitude. Today, your attitude is more is better. You, you, know, you aspire for, for newer things. You aspire for the latest gadget. You aspire for the most fashionable clothes. You aspire for a new car. Uh, so, you know, I think uh, that attitude towards aspiring for upgrading your life, what is believed as upgrading your life, will come under question. Uh, now, and the second thing that will happen is that people will, will uh, also change their behavior. You know, behavior like they'll become a lot more comfortable with online. Uh, they will become a lot more savvy about uh, about uh, you know using their time. Uh, they would uh, you know things like work from home, things like 
okay alternate days of office uh, things like you know um, delivery services rather than rather than going out to restaurants things like uh, avoiding unnecessary travel will become part of life um, i think people will want to older people will want to simplify their life and the younger people will want to question, question uh, this entire race towards more and more consumerism i think that's a given because because of the time period because this is going to be an extended time period it's not something which will go, go away on april the 14th we will be in some kind of a phase to stop this now that brings me to your question about india yeah india may not suffer as much as america or italy suffers you know these are all hypotheses but because of either bcg or the heat uh, or the inbuilt immunity in in indians because we are used to a much more difficult environment for many reasons india may not suffer as much as, as other countries but the fear is very much there because it is the one virus where the mortality rate is much higher so the fear is there and it is fear which changes consumer attitudes and behavior and once you become comfortable with a with a behavior then to go back to old behavior takes a long time if at all so my sense is that it will fundamentally alter human beings relationship with products and services now services will be the hardest effect uh, hit because services is all about contact is all about you go to an ayurved clinic to get a massage it's about contact you go to an event to to enjoy a, a music show it's about contact you go to cinema it's you're sitting next to somebody you fly you go travel you go to a restaurant you go to you go to uh, you know even office it's it's your in close uh, close proximity with people and these are the these are the areas which will probably suffer the most will go through a v thing and i hope that it it over time uh, recovers because otherwise we are in for a difficult time service industry employs and accounts for a significant uh, percentage of our gdp gdp and if that gets affected because of the fear in in inherent fear then i think we are in for a very very uh, tough time now uh, the longer it lasts the worse it will get because habits change attitudes change if it is a short thing like if suppose we were to open everything were to be open on april 15th i think the the the, the hit to the economy the hit to to establish businesses will be lower as it lasts longer it, the hit will be much much more now i'm not saying one thing is better than the other that's not the part of uh, that's not uh, what i'm uh, discussing and i think uh, i think it will so behavior will change attitudes will change and therefore what products you seek and how you seek them how those products are delivered will get changed so much less contactless uh, business will grow online will grow delivery will grow uh, you know um, um, on um, of or offline online education will grow so those are the things that will that will grow so people in that space where virtually you can deliver the service or you can deliver the product i think that that whole business uh, will get an acceleration will get a quantum uh, quantum uh, uh, leap that's the that's the point about consumer uh, behavior the second big thing that startups uh, will suffer from during this time period is because startups have a lot of fixed costs largely in salaries and in rent they don't make products but they make they they, they employ a lot of people and uh, their uh, and and most of the delivery is through people you know it's through either either services or online or or saas products or whatever you uh, you 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 call it and it is there that in the short term they will go through a very difficult time because they will start running out of cash uh you know cash is limited and uh, and um, no nobody in this very very uncertain environment will write large checks they will write they will write milestone checks they will say okay do this okay let's let's wait for a while you know even even people putting in money will be will be uh, will be careful will be will try and 
try and get the uncertainty out of the out of the decision making so my sense is that the most valuable thing that the startups have which is cash because it it gives them time cash gives them time and the second thing is the ip that they have created you know they have to guard that and ip largely resides in 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 the people so i think the most important thing is to protect what you have built preserve what you have built and what and therefore preserve cash preserve the preserve the ideas that you have preserve the people or, or retain the people that have created those ideas i think that will be fundamental now it's easy said than done because all of this requires money and so i think they will, there will be a, there will be a huge uh, demand um, you know, amongst the startups for funding uh, you know because the revenues during this time period will be virtually nothing and the cost will be there so i think they will be so i so as an investor it may be a good time to have a look at which are the startups where yeah, whereby you should put put cash which which will be supported by the changing behavior of consumers you know those kind of startups will do will will do very well and the startups which are which are uh, to do with the old kind of behavior old kind of aspiration may have a may 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 uh, may have a difficult a, a lot more difficult time uh, so that is the second uh, thing i would i would say that uh, try and preserve what you have built during this time period preserve cash preserve the the brains of your people you know you know, the, the particularly the creative people the people who who have created and preserve ideas preserve and think through you know what are the what are the things you 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 uh, can do and the last thing i would say during this time period is this also gives you an opportunity to reimagine the business to restructure it reimagine it both on the cost side and i know tons of people are talking about you know reducing the cost structure people are not paying rents i know uh, a lot of the restaurant business the the uh, airline business the hospitality business where where and the assets were not owned by them the retail business um, where the assets were not owned by them they are asking for a rent free period because the revenue is zero and they've got all this fixed cost so they will re they will restructure their cost they will structure their cost so that the costs are 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 in line with the new reality and the new reality may be that it will take time at least a year for a year maybe even longer for the old behavior to start kicking in whereby you can expect revenues to come back to uh, some semblance of old level i won't be surprised if some businesses go through a huge uh, downward uh, downward shift of course there'll be a lot of other businesses lot of, not other lot of not lot but some other businesses which will see a fill in you know uh, which will see see growth. for example um, you know i don't think tea coffee Uh, staples are going away. I think they will tea and coffee with people sitting at home drinking more coffee, coffee. Uh, you know things which sustain you, which gives you a little bit of pleasure during the day. I think they will they will continue to uh, continue. Internet services continue to grow. But if you are in the in the uh, textile business, you are in the garment business, you are in the hospitality business, you are in the aviation business, you are in the entertainment business. you know you that that will go through a that will go through a a, a big uh, a big downward um, you know graph uh, before it starts gradually uh, picking up and so that's that those are the, the those are the things i would uh, those are the three advice i would give to repeat myself one is preserve what is valuable particularly cash and people second is understand the changing behavior and it may take it may take a much longer period it may take uh, you know 12 months to 18 months it's not a short term fix it's not that things will change from 14th of april wo to hone wala nahi i don't think that is going to happen and the third is i uh, use this this time to restructure the business and reimagine it see if there is an online component of it see there if there is a remote virtual component of it see you know how you can deliver service uh, in that manner If you can, I think that will that will be better.
sorry i've rambled on vikram no, no, this is this is perfect i think this is exactly uh, i mean you summarize it so well uh, and i think you covered most of the areas which i wanted to discuss but i think i just want to dig a little deeper into uh, some of those things that that you said and i think you you're absolutely bang on in terms of you know the mindset that going to change if thing if this thing lasts longer obviously it, it will kind of uh, uh, seep into their minds and it will be a little more difficult to change their mindsets and i think in one of the calls uh, that we had recently somebody mentioned that uh, you know now the uh, buildings have started doing aggregation of their demands for groceries you know there's a, there's a new company which has started doing that so so there are new business models which are emerging in the in the current situation and, and i think that's where you know i think would love to hear your view also maybe in terms of the entire supply chain if you look at the supply chain of the consumer goods and especially you know when we're talking of uh, things which are essentials in this scenario and of course as you said maybe things which are not uh, of uh, immediate need people may delay their decision for buying those but uh, currently the one of the biggest issues that uh, companies like amazon big basket uh, and uh, and swiggy they're facing is one is the manpower issue you know they are actually having huge demand but they're not able to deliver because of the shortage of manpower uh, and the second is generally because uh, the supply chain uh, their supply chain issues they're finding it hard to really uh, you know uh, uh, supply to the requirements so how do you see the entire supply chain in the in the entire consumer business uh, evolving in this uh, in the current uh, situation uh, see i my belief is that un- here the government has a big role to play and unfortunately uh, you know not much thought or maybe thought has been given but not much action has been taken on this side let me explain this in most supply chain is a service business in most service businesses it is the it is people from outside the core metropolitan area the migrant labor who are involved in it delivery boys uh, service boys people who serve in restaurants people who 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 do small small lower lower paying jobs now for them to survive they they couldn't have they can't afford to pay rent in the large city so they've all migrated or they are all of them are trying to migrate uh, to their to their villages partly because of economic reason and partly because of fear they fear ki yahan pe to koi dekhne wala nahi hai wahan pe to kam se kam family hai you know somebody will look after them. and i am part of you know you when, when you are when you are fearful you you withdraw back so as a result a lot of the workflow pro- the we will face huge issues when we reopen because people once they've gone back to their their their, their villages and they've migrated out for them to even come back and join and retrain etc will be a long process it doesn't happen that the day you open people people go uh, get into uh, trucks and buses and trains and come back to uh, to town so my my belief is that unless business continues the government steps in and and gives them now i know that the government is is trying to do a lot in terms of giving them some money to live but unless the unless the rent issue and unless the migration issue is solved we are in for a big problem and that is the issue with all big retailers today that is the issue with with big basket etc beyond fear uh, you know even delivery boys are fearful that they may catch it you know they are in con- they are living in contact with so many people so what will happen is that currently how how is service performed it is one to one you know people go people eat there are people serving you and and uh, you know so there is a lot of contact points you know if you look at if you when you go uh, grocery shopping there are a lot of contact points because and and good marketeers maximize the contact points they will put their products in many contact points all that is going to change because people will be fearful of more and more contact so my sense is that aggregation services like you you mentioned that you know in big building there is an aggregator 
or in the, you know who will aggregate all the groceries bring it now that also that also does the same job as a delivery guy but one to one people will be more fearful in a delivery guy one guy delivers to many people in an aggregator the aggregator takes it and the and you just go to a particular place and take your stuff and go away so the number of contacts will in the whole supply chain will also need to deal with reducing the number of contacts uh, and it will go through a massive change partly because of labor and partly because of fear and changed attitudes and and people who are able to reimagine that you are able to to see it, uh, will will gain i think no oh, that's a, that's a very very important uh, thing you said uh, ravi and you you also uh, alluded to the government you know has to do a lot more and i think that's an important uh, point and most of the startups are actually trying to you know find ways uh, and in fact i mean uh, what i'm seeing myself is that you know there is a lot of receptiveness in the government uh, very recently last week in fact we had a call with the push goel a lot of startups and a lot of uh, funds in that call and there's a lot of listening uh, happening wanting to do uh, whatever government can do uh, so so you know from your perspective what are the things you think uh, one should ask the government uh, or uh, the things that the government should be able to do Uh, in the current situation, which which can be executed uh, in the short term or in the medium term. See, I have a very simple way of looking at it, uh, Vikram. I'm not a genius. I don't have a solution for these problems. But I have a very simple way of looking at at this. To me, business continuity, making sure that what has been built over the years doesn't go down the drain, is a very very important priority. otherwise rebuilding it will take ages and will cost us a lot of money so my my proposition is very very simple my proposition is that the government should articulate very clearly that between now and whatever time it takes 3 months 4 months 5 months 6 months you know we are on a survival mode nothing else we are all going to try and survive as human beings and as businesses now how do human beings survive human beings survive through largely two things medication and food you don't need extra clothes when you are staying at home you don't need cars you don't need petrol you don't need you know you just need a nourishment and you need uh, medicines if that is available so the government should say very very clearly that for people to survive i am going to provide you with medicine and i am going to provide you with food at the lower level give it free to people or give them enough money so that they can buy food and calculate per person it may take 3000 5000 rupees whatever it costs uh, you know that i am going to give you this money you please just eat and i am going to give you your your essential medication free or i am going to give you money so that you are food and medicine should be totally uh, people should be given that absolutely everybody below a certain poverty line now you and my, me don't require a government loan okay we we are quite we've got a bank we can withdraw money so very simply anybody who has more than say 30 40 000 rupees in their bank account will not get anything from the government people below that who have very little they'll continuously they should be assured that you will live don't worry about it we'll provide you medicine we'll provide you hospitalization if you if and when you get this virus and we'll provide you food and they should say similarly for business business also is in the survival mode till the business comes back to its old level there is no fixed cost so it should say very clearly that you don't have to pay rent to anybody and the guy who has taken loan from the bank he doesn't have to pay interest not just more not just moratorium but no interest the bank should be told you cannot charge any interest i cannot earn interest on the money that i have so it is like taking 6 months or 3 months or for no whatever time it takes out of your life and freezing life and saying there is no fixed cost during that there is no fixed income during that so if i have a retainer from a company right i don't get it if i have a i have money in the bank i get no interest 
but I don't pay any rent to anybody. You know, I don't pay salaries to my people because I can't afford it. If you are running a restaurant and the revenue is zero, how long can you afford to pay people? You can't. But that is the point I'm trying to make that take a freeze during that time period, particularly in services, because in services, everything is shut. Everything is closed. Revenue is zero, but fixed costs remain. You establishment costs are there, salaries are there, other fixed costs are, are remain. The government should say very clearly during this time, just give everybody in your employee a living wage. Wherever they are below the poverty line, the government gives. Wherever they are above the poverty line, for example, I'll give you an example. My son employs 250 uh, people. He runs nine or ten, ten, ten restaurants. He employs 250 people. He can't pay rent. He can't pay salaries. But if the government were to say that you just pay them a living wage for every employee, give them 3,000, 5,000 rupees, let them live, let them just survive. He'll be very happy to do that. Otherwise, what option does he have? He has to declare bankruptcy. Similarly, people who run, people uptake, take people who are self-employed. So my, my view is very, very simple. Assume you are in a survival mode, both for individual as well as business. On individual below a power, below a certain amount of money, the government gives them that and induces all businesses to at least give what I call the living wage. So whether you are a CEO of a company or you are the lowest employee of the company, your need to live is the same. Your cost to live is the same. I don't need to eat. Uh, I don't need to eat caviar and I don't need to eat uh, eat. Uh, uh, you know, gulab jamun every day. I am good with dal roti sabdi. Wo milni chahiye. Mujhe bas wo pote. And similarly to my so, uh, my my living wage and my and the lowest employee that my son has, his living wage should be the same. So the government should just fix okay, everybody who is employed, everybody who is there. They will get this amount of money to live. That is it. And it will there will be no fixed cost so that the businesses survive. Otherwise, the businesses will go down under. If, if tomorrow the banks start charging uh, uh, interest on the loan you have you have taken, the landlord starts charging a rent. My employees start charge, uh, asking for the same salary as they, they used to uh, go. How, without with zero revenue, how is it going to work? It's never going to work. So my my suggestion to the government would be very very simple. Please look after people who are not employed. All the people who are employed, please urge their businesses wherever they can afford to give them a living wage. And most businesses will be able to give a living wage. They can't pay huge salary. They can't pay salaries for people's aspirations. But I'm sure they can find out money to pay for them to be kept alive. That is the point I'm I'm, I'm trying to make. Take right, so time out. Put that freeze there and say no economic, no no fixed cost during that time period. Guys, keep your people alive. Keep your businesses alive. That's it. After that, you know, and the government should actually step in and help help do that. But the most important thing is to articulate this, to let people know, rather than say, no, if you don't give your salary, you'll be in jail. Where will he get it from? Yeah, you know, that's a, that's a very, very valuable uh, suggestion. And I totally agree with you on whatever you said. I think uh, that is... A fundamental uh, issue. Uh, so, so let me. I think you know. Uh, we are towards the end of this session. I, I just wanted to also uh, request you for your advice to the founders because I think the founders are currently. I mean, this is probably the first time ever people are uh, working in their own homes, and uh, you know, uh, the whole culture of uh, you know people doing all their business from home. I think it's very new. Uh, to India especially, uh, but I think people are somehow managing that. But what what would be your advice to uh, to the founders uh, who are uh, managing uh, from their homes, working uh, uh, with their teams from home? Uh, how should they manage their day to day things, and uh, you know uh, what should be their approach uh, to life in general? See the founders uh, uh, number one task i think is to preserve what they have built uh, and i'm repeating myself but if you built an ip you built you have an idea 
you know that is the number one task number two task is to reimagine your business is to figure out okay what i have this idea now i have time can i work on it can i talk to engage my people because they all have time we are not now we are not wasting time traveling up to office and going going out of office we are not wasting time uh, over a you know over a meeting whereby not all of us are required and we have, we have quality time on our hands so how can i best use my time and number 3 is communicate the founders need to talk to all their people so i would i would very much uh, say that that you know almost every and most of the startups are small companies right they are 20 30 40 people uh, you know put them all on a on a on a group talk to them explain to them give them hope give them assurance give them give them the feeling that we are all in it together you know uh, jointly reimagine the business with them uh, and people who are, don't want to be part of the new new going forward new business model for example going forward new business model may be that the chefs will get a much higher salary but the service staff will get a much lower salary you know it may be very different or or uh, the 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 new business model will be that each airline ticket will cost you five times because you'll be sitting five uh, things away so you have to reduce your 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 travel and therefore a more you know the salesperson who has to go from shop to shop can he do something online can he do something whereby remotely he can he can touch base uh, base with so i think the, if the founders get involved get the whole team to reimagine their business communicate and reimagine their business i think it will be time well spent no that's uh, that's very well said uh, ravi and i think uh, i mean whatever you said that's it's a uh, of, of huge value and i'm sure founders of uh, our own portfolio and uh, startups in general i think uh, will benefit a lot uh, from whatever you said uh, any anything uh, else you would like to say in the end ravi any any last words no i i'm i'm you know i'm a great uh, believer in people finding solutions we found solutions for almost uh, uh, everything and i think if our if we and i'm sure we'll find a new new solution for this uh, my only request is find a solution which is uh, friendly to the other people who inhabited the earth find a solution which is good for the birds the bees the animals the the bacteria the the kingdom don't don't you know be human beings that push uh, the earth way too much and find a more sustainable solution find a solution which is which is good for good for our existence for our longevity and i mean i i think people people are getting it people are i'm sure we'll find a we'll find a solution to to even this and uh, you know i have no doubt that uh, human human beings we are so creative and uh, and so yeah, you know we have we have the will to live so i think we'll all get there that's awesome uh, ravi and uh, thank you so much really appreciate your time and uh, this was a great session and uh, personally for me as well a lot of learning so thank you so much and uh, please uh, stay safe and healthy and uh, i hope the situation improves uh, sooner than later so thank you so much uh, ravi for your you time. know to you i wish at least our iv cap ecosystem you know all the very very best Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, Ravi. Uh, thank you so much.